Hey everyone, it's Kirk Masson here at Masson Labs, and today we're gonna to be going over how to get a light and airy look to your edits. I'm gonna start with this image uh, by Whiskers and Willow, and I'm going to just do a very easy, simple edit. I'm gonna keep it down to like, you know, three or four steps max. So I'm going to apply Fuji 400H neutral. And as you can see, it has shifted the micro contrast, the, the tones and colors to a more pastel palette, lifted some of the shadows and protected some of the highlights. After that, I'm gonna use a lens correction. So as you can see, when I roll over that, you'll notice how the corners get lighter and the image, the image seems to stretch a little bit. And so what is happening here is we are applying lens correction to the lens that was used to make this photo. And inside of Lightroom, there is a library of lens correction files that are specific to different lenses. If that file exists in Lightroom, if, if your lens is listed in Lightroom in the latest update, you will have your image corrected when you hit that button. If you are using some old lens that you've adapted for your camera, when you hover over lens correction on, nothing will happen because there's no data in Lightroom for that. But in this case, it's fine. It's a shot with a 50 millimeter, I'm assuming some 50 millimeter Nikon lens, uh, so it works. So I always do that as part of getting that fine art look that we all kind of aspire to for light and airy. Okay, enough about that. So I've applied the preset, I've applied lens correction. Now I'm going to adjust exposure. The exposure looks pretty good. I might go up just a tiny bit and yeah, that's it. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is adjust temperature and tint. Uh, this image is way too cool. So I'm gonna just uh, pull the temperature slider up to, I don't know, about here. Uh, Fuji 400H is not a super saturated, um, super warm film. It, it just, the actual film itself is pastel. It, it, it airs on the side of a cool look. So if you go too far with your temperature adjustments towards warm, you kind of are working against the natural look of that film. So I just brought up temperature just a little bit. The last thing I'm gonna do, and this is kind of the super duper tip um, for people who love skin tone, is I'm going to do some small adjustments on the tint slider. And this is where most people struggle. Most people can see warm and cool really easily with their eyes. You can see if something is like, you know, like a Smurf, like really, really blue, or like the blazing sun and way too warm. Um, tint is a little harder though, and that is where you get your good skin tones. And one thing I'm gonna tell you about tint is that you don't need to make big adjustments. You know, temperature can go swing wildly back and forth to get that dialed in, and you can do it with your eyes really easily, but tint is usually just a few points. By looking at this image, if I zoom in, you can hardly notice it, but on his suit here and on her shoulder and a little bit in his, his side of his face right here, and even her face, it feels a little too magenta. Only a few points. So what I'm gonna do is hover over the tint slider and then using my keyboard, not my mouse, my keyboard, I'm gonna use the up and down arrows here you know, the little directional keys. And if you hover over a control in Lightroom, you can then use your, your uh, arrow keys to do very, very small adjustments. You don't have to do it that way, but it's just easier. And I usually do that for tint. So hovering over the tint slider, I'm just gonna push down a few times. Let's see, so this is what it was at. And if I go down one, two times, that looks flipping amazing. And here is, the before and after. And that is like your classic Southern California, you know, golden hour, beautiful open shade light and look. That's like, if you're shooting film and you want that light and airy look, this is what you aspire to. It's Fuji 400H. Uh, if it was film, you're shooting it quite a bit overexposed, but digital you're not. And this is the look that you're trying to go for. And that's it, that's it, that's the easy, Easy breezy light and airy edit. The reason it's so easy on this photo, and I'm sure there's people out there going, oh, but you know, it's that photo, that's why, that's why you're getting that look. Yes, you're right. 
because you have to have the right foundation for a light and airy photo. The reason that this is so easy to edit is that the photographer took all of the other things into account that I go over in, a, in my other light and airy edit video, where I go into the wardrobe, location, and lighting. All those things are perfect, and that's why it's so easy to do the editing part. They're wearing neutral colors. They're not in direct sun. They're kind of backlit, so it's very evenly lit. And they're in an environment that's already very neutral and pale. They're out in the desert. All those things combined make this edit super easy. So if you want to see that, check out our other video. And I go into that more in detail. Today is just about editing. So, all right, let's move on. Let's do something completely different. Um, and in fact, I'm going to show you why the direction of the sun is so important. So let's do this image. It's by Andy David. And I'm going to do another uh, light and airy edit. I'm going to try to. Now, this image is quite a bit different than the desert image we were just on than this one. Here you can see that they're in the forest. Um, it's the middle of the day or close to the middle of the day. I can tell by looking up here. See this really bright light on these trees. Uh, the sun is certainly not set and it looks like a bright sunny day except they're in some kind of open shade in the forest. They're in dappled light. Dappled meaning like little beams of light coming through the brush. You can see it on a suit and on her dress. That's going to be a problem. It's going to be make it difficult, uh, but I'll do the best I can. So not ideal lighting situation. The background is a little, I don't know, it's a little, uh, it's fairly neutral. I think it'll be all right for light and airy, but it'll be quite a bit colorful. Um, and then as far as their wardrobe, that looks fine. I mean, his suit is a bit dark, but it should work out fine. So here we go. So here's Fuji 400H neutral. I'll do the lens correction again. Ah, nothing happened. Nothing happened because whatever the heck lens this is, it doesn't have any kind of profile. So this is a Fuji X-T3 with a 23 millimeter f1.4 lens. And at least in our copy of Lightroom, there is no profile for that. So nothing happened. So, oh well, we'll move on. Uh, from here, I'm going to adjust the exposure up. And you'll see that we quickly run into a problem of if I go too high, uh, you know, to kind of bring out the, the density of the whole photo, we start to blow out, blow out meaning going too much towards white on her forehead and on her body and on his head. And it just doesn't look good. So we can solve this by going up a bit and then going to a tone profile that I mentioned earlier. The tone profile is a is in this section down here, number two, the second section of our modular system. These tone profiles come from the Fuji Frontier SP3000 film scanner that we use to make everything not important. Um, but these tools help you solve problems like this. All hard makes the whole image have more contrast. All soft gives you more detail in the highlights and shadows. And then highlight hard would make the shadow or make the highlights um, more contrasty. Highlight soft would make them softer and so on and so on. It's pretty self-explanatory. So I want to make the entire image brighter and lighter and more airy. The way that I'm going to get there is I'm going to hit all soft. And that's going to knock down the highlights and bring out detail in the shadows at the same time. And now the image has less of that dappled light punch that we don't want because we're, we're trying to aim for this in a completely different situation and the tone profiles help. I know I talk a lot, but I, I, I'm an over explainer because I want you to understand. Okay, so we used all soft to bring out a little more detail in highlights and shadows. Now I'm gonna go to temperature and tint. So they're, they're way too cool. I can tell by their skin tones. So that's the primary place I always look. So I'm gonna increase temperature just a little bit, maybe about there. And then as far as tint goes, um, they look a little bit too magenta to me. Again, if I go into their skin tones, just a tiny bit too magenta. So I'm gonna hover over the tint slider. I'm gonna pick up my keyboard again, and I'm gonna hit down on the down arrow once or twice. 
So once and twice, I'm right on the border, but starting to get too green. So maybe back up. So I went down one click, that's it. You can see how small those adjustments are for tint. Um, let me show you where I'm at so far. So the left is the starting image, you know, unedited image, and the right is my attempt at making it light and airy. This is about as far as I can go on this image because of the light that it's shot in and also because of the environment. If he had a, like, I don't know, like a tan suit on or something lighter, um, and if, I don't know, they were backed up a bit so that these dark parts of the foliage were not in the frame, we could make the image feel much closer to this. But it's not really a factor of the film or preset or anything at this point. It's a factor of the conditions you're shooting in, and you can never make a photo, you can't make a light and airy photo look dark and moody, and you can't make a dark and moody photo look light and airy because you're just starting with the wrong ingredients. You can get close, but you're never going to get it exactly what the ideal is as far as like what people, you know, in Facebook and everywhere else that I see what they're going for. But it's still a nice edit. So anyway, that's a lot of explaining, but I want you to understand. Still a great photo. I'm sure the, the uh, clients would be very happy with it. Um, but yeah, this may do better as a dark and moody photo, if I'm being completely honest. Like if I put, um, portrait pushed on it, let me find that real quick. I don't know if I put like portrait 160 push two stops and then drop the exposure down. Um, that's a little too red. I'll do one stop. Oops. There we go. I'll warm it up a bit. That's cool. That that feels like a way, isn't that nice? That's that's a way more appropriate edit for this situation. So the, the, the lesson there is it's good to have more tools in your toolbox than just one. So in a lighting situation like this, everything considered, I would go for a dark and moody edit because that's the environment they're in. Um, whereas this is a light and airy environment. And if I did portrait 160 push one stop, uh, it might look fine. Actually, you know, it can take it, but an image like this needs that direction. All right, let's move on. Let's do, I think this is really nice. No, let, okay, before I get to that one, let me do this one. Now, looking at this, you would say, hey, that's almost kind of the same situation as this. Like, they're in a dark forest. It's going to be really hard to get that light and airy look. It, you know, it's going to be tough. You, you wouldn't believe me if I told you this right now, but this situation, this lighting situation is actually much closer to this than it is to this. Why? Let me tell you why. Because the, the way the light is hitting them, it is diffused evenly across the front here. And they've got this little, nice little uh, rim light around them from it coming through the trees you can actually get a very nice, even lit, light and airy picture in a dark forest because they're wearing the right kinds of clothing. There's no, nothing super colorful. The background is pretty neutral and the light is just right. So here is a Fuji edit here. So I applied uh, Fuji 400H, let's do lens correction. All right, there's a profile for this camera. So you saw it change. And now I'm going to increase the exposure and look at that. Um, I think it's a little too magenta, so I'm gonna go down a little bit. Yeah, right about there, and I might even cool it down just a tiny bit. There we go. Um, that looks pretty flipping good, and I could also do all soft if I wanna go even softer. So let's do all soft and bring up the exposure one more time. All right, so this, as you can see, it's like a diamond in the rough. It's a beautiful photo, it looks fantastic. It started out like this. And the reason it works is that at a fundamental level, it's closer to this kind of situation than to this situation. So there's a lesson there. I hope, I hope it's, it's coming through. If you know, you know.
Um, but yeah, that, that's how e easy it is to do a light and airy edit if the dynamics of the light are right. So there's no dappled light here. Like what I mean by that is they're evenly lit on their bodies. Here, they're lit completely different on the top as they are, I don't know, over here. There you go. Okay, who's next? Let's do this one. This is by Nancy McCready. Oh yeah, wait, wait, wait. This last one was by Howard Treby. Okay, just wanna make sure I mention everybody. All right, so this is by Nancy McCready. So what's interesting about this image is that it is a JPEG. Um, <laughs> We normally don't want people to send us JPEGs and Mass and Labs is not really meant for JPEGs. Uh, however, I'm gonna show you a trick where you can get it to be approximately right. So I'm gonna apply, I don't know, let's do, uh, let's see here. I'm gonna do 400 H again, cause it's the, uh, it's one of the, it's one of the softest presets or films that exists in terms of contrast. And a JPEG has a lot of contrast. It's one of the main problems of a JPEG when you're editing. Um, but I'm gonna apply 400H neutral. No lens correction is working for this, that's fine. Um, I'm going to get the uh, temperature right. It's a little bit cool and it's a little bit magenta. Okay, and it's a JPEG, right? Nah, wah, wah, wah. Um, still a beautiful photo. What you can do if you accidentally shot a JPEG, and this happens to people in our community some all the time actually, is you go to the contrast slider, and I would never recommend this normally, so don't ever even think about it, but if it's a JPEG, you can bring the contrast down, you know, by about a quarter. And that'll really help offset the problems of it being in a JPEG. It, it like decrunchifies it. Um, now that I did that, I think it's a little too green, so I'm gonna go up in magenta one click. That looks pretty good. Okay, so that's that's not a bad edit with a JPEG to get that light and airy look. Um, I am noticing that the greens are kind of neon, and that comes from the fact that it's a JPEG. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Fuji 400H Blue. A lot of people ask, what is that film? And the truth is, is, that, is that it's the only thing we make that isn't real. Uh, Fuji 400H Blue is not a real film. It's based on the real film called Fuji 400H. And I made it to help people who have shot in the wrong light or the wrong foliage for the sage green Southern California look that they actually want. So if I apply Fuji 400H Blue, you can see it just knocks down those greens and it brings them to that sage, you know, pale pastel green that they actually want in their deepest of hearts because they don't want the Gatorade, uh, you know, or not Gatorade, like the Mountain Dew green. So that is how I would approach this JPEG. And it's a really nice edit. Their skin is nice and warm. The background is nice and cool. And it has that low contrast and pastel feel of Fuji 400H. All right, let's move on. There's so many good images. Um, let's check this one out. This one's really cool. This is by Shay Imrit. Uh, I love it. I love this image. I love, I love that you used something to put in front of the lens to kind of add depth. I love that. That's really clever and it's out of focus and it's cool. It draws me like right up into her eye. There's kind of a shape going through this photo. So I, I really enjoy that. Um, let's do a, di a little different kind of edit here. Let's do, let's do something a little more colorful. So I'm going to use Fuji color 800 Z. Now 800 Z is a film that was nearly impossible to emulate because the last time that it was produced was in 2013. Um, and it took me a few years to get enough film that had been stored correctly since then to make something accurate. But what I like about it is that it has this really, really interesting and beautiful kind of peachy uh, pink overtone to it. And it can be 
overexpose quite a bit and look really fantastic. So it's for a very kind of stylized light and airy look. And I will show you that now. So Fuji Color 800Z. Going to um, do my lens correction, as usual. Now I'm going to, I'm going to increase the exposure. And you're probably going, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's like already way too overexposed. Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's my, my spliff, or whatever that TikTok is. Um, yeah, don't worry about it um, because I'm going to do all soft. And in fact, now you can see I can go a little higher in exposure. I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to kind of maximize that, that tonal range. So now, now that it looks beautiful. Um, it already looked beautiful before I did anything, but it's beautiful film looking now. Uh, I'm going to decrease the tint towards green just a little bit. So I did like two clicks down and I'm going to decrease the temperature just a tiny bit. That looks so cool. So there you go. That's, that's like the spirit and feeling of 800 Z. I love that film. Um, it's just fantastic in the right situations. So thank you so much, Shay. That's a really, really beautiful image. Very captivating. All right. I'm going to do, I'm going to do two more and then we will wrap it up. Um, actually let's do this one. All right, so this is by Radical Agape Productions. This is a, see, ARW is Sony, so it's a Sony file. Uh, it's from a seven of uh, uh, Mark III, cool, awesome. All right, so let's do, let's do Fuji 160NS for this one. One, uh, 160 NS is a Fuji film that's got a little more saturation, especially in um, cyan and in red. And it's a little more colorful and a little, has a little more contrast than Fuji 400H. And I think it might look nice on this one. So I applied it, do lens correction on. And then I'm going to go into exposure and increase that. And right away I noticed that their skin tones are too cool and too green. So I'm going to increase the temperature and you can especially, well, okay, I'm zooming in right here, but this to me looks very green and it looks very green right here. Um, and the underside of her arm looks very green, although that could be coming from the grass underneath. So I'm going to focus just in here and hovering over tint. I'm going to click up, I don't know, probably three or four times. One, two, uh, that looks about right. Maybe too far. Yeah. So somewhere in between there and there, that looks fine. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit all soft because I want to see more of what's happening up here in the veil and around the side. Um, I could actually just do highlight soft because I do like the contrast in the darker sections and the shadows here. So let's do highlight soft. That looks really nice. Um, and maybe exposure up just a tiny bit more. Bop, right about there. So there you go. Really nice 160 NS edit. Um, looks fantastic. And uh, you know, what's really nice about this is the, the veil kind of wrapping around them and over is like putting a silk over a scene when you're shooting like in a studio or outside where you're diffusing the light. And this photographer made just a great call in diffusing the light on probably a harsh day over their subject. And this enabled us to get a really nice light and airy edit. So the last image I'm gonna to do today is this really cool image by Sasha Popovic. Um, I like this because it has all of the elements of a light and airy look but it is in kind of an interesting lighting situation. So they're in what I would call high overcast, which is like super bright overcast. And I'm not sure how this is gonna go, but I think it's gonna go well. So Fuji 400H. Oh yeah, great. And then I'm going to go to exposure. I think maybe just a tiny bit up. They already look really good. And then, uh, I'm gonna go up in temperature just a skosh. 
And the reason I'm saying that is that the white of his shirt and the white of these poles, which I think are actually more of like a gray, they just seem a little too cool. So go, I'm gonna go up just a tiny bit. Uh, right about, eh. I mean, just the bare minimal amount warmer because Fuji is a cool film. You don't wanna make it warm if it's not meant to be warm. So you go just up high enough that the neutrals are not going like yellow, but they're also not blue. And that looks flipping awesome. Um, maybe a little bit towards green, like one tap there. Easy. All right. Does it need lens correction? Let's find out. Eh, yeah, I guess. It's not that drastic on this one. And then should we do all soft? You know, we could, but I, I'm actually kind of digging the um, the contrast in this image. I think it, it really pops in a nice way. So there you go. Nice, light, and airy edit. This works really well because their outfits are, I mean, they're neutral, they're white. Um, the background is pretty neutral too. The bridge is like white. The, the trees are quite a bit bright green, but... Um, the, the Fuji 400H uh, film, you know, that look cools them down and it, overall it's just a really pretty image and an easy edit. So that's about it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. It's not a hard process, especially if you're starting with really good source material, good light, good wardrobe, good background. If you enjoyed this, we've got plenty of other editing videos. Just be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell on YouTube if you're seeing it there, or to follow us on Facebook, go to our group, the Mass and Labs community on Facebook and join us. I don't care if you own anything from Mass and Labs or not, we just love helping people. And we have all kinds of content. We've got, I think we've made over 60 videos this year on editing and other parts of photography. And I wanna help you and I want you to see them. Um, you also can drop in raw images there if you want to see what Mass and Labs looks like on your work so you can be sure before you buy. Um, but yeah, you'll have like 18 people jump on your image and just give you any kind of option you want. It's amazing. You can also contact, contact us directly through DMs by going to m.me forward slash Mass and Labs and we are ready and willing to help you with any questions you have. It's a great way to figure out anything you need to know. But until next time, have a great day and happy editing.